Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another live class. I apologize for being a few minutes late for some reason. I always forget that when I do a watercolor class, I have to like change my entire setup um, because I'm doing it on the um, I'm doing it on my desk rather than on the easel, so I have to like switch everything around. But nonetheless, we are here, and I'm excited to paint with you. If you are here live, please make sure to comment down below. Um, if you're painting with someone, that's really cool too. Um, or maybe where you're painting from, if this is your first class, one of my classes, or if this is your first watercolor class. Um, I always love hearing um, all your guys' different stories. And um, yeah, welcome in. I do wanna mention um, that we are doing two watercolors back to back. I think I'm gonna switch my watercolor class um, from the back end of the month to the front end of the month. Um, so it's gonna be our first class of the month. And the reason for this little sneak peek, the reason for this is next year, um, I think I want to do watercolor classes based off of the flower of the month. And so I'm gonna do that at the front of the month rather than um, the back of the month. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a little heads up on what I'm thinking for um, the next year. And that actually spawned from next week's, uh, next month's class. Well, it is next week because next week is the first um, Wednesday. But let me give you a little sneak peek. If you're not on my Facebook, then you wouldn't have seen this yet. Um, but this is what we're painting next month. So it's a really pretty um, aster flower. Um, and it's actually, I got the inspiration from it being September, one of September's. Um, flower of the month so we're gonna be painting that next week so if you enjoy watercolors and you enjoy loose florals this is gonna be a really fun one I have a couple other loose florals um, in my uh, on my page as well on my channel uh, but yeah uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I have acrylic classes and watercolor classes. Most of them are acrylics, um, but I am starting to do more watercolor classes. So please make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so you can get um, all of those notifications that I'm going live and when I'm going live. Um, and if you're not on Facebook, highly recommend going over there on my Facebook um, and following me there because that is probably where I put out 90, 95% of all of my, um, all of my updates, my uh, future classes. I do Facebook events for all of my classes over here on YouTube so you can share them with your friends. It makes it really easy um, to share going. Um, also, so you can say that you're going and then it gives you a reminder, like Facebook gives you a reminder um, instead of just the um, instead of just a 30 minute reminder that YouTube gives you that I like saying, hey, 30 minutes, like this person's going live, Facebook gives you like the day of. So that's a really huge benefit of being on Facebook and um, following me there because then you get to respond to all of the events um, and they're really easy to share with your friends. Um, and then you guys get to paint the same thing. So um, yeah, let's go over all of the supplies and then we will get, uh, we'll get started, okay? So the first thing I want to share is the traceable. Now I only have a traceable for one of them, but it is free. Um, I made this free because I don't want you guys to be 
held back by not wanting to do a traceable or not wanting to pay for a traceable. So for this specific one, I did make it free. There's only one, but it's just to give you an idea of what to do. I honestly, I really do want you guys to kind of create your own. Um, I, I'm here as a teacher to um, not only teach you, but give you inspiration um, to be able to create your own art, right? Um, so it's not just you replicating my art or something that I've created, but giving you the tools um, and lessons for you to create your own, right? Um, that's part of my philosophy and that's part of these classes. Um, and that's also part of my channel. So um, please use this as inspiration, but it does not have to look exactly like this. Um, so um, just a note, and I know a lot of people probably didn't come to this class because the example was a little bit messy because it's on such a small scale. Um, but when I, when I did this, it was just kind of, it was a little bit in a hurry because um, I was trying to get the, the classes out. Um, so I just did it on a very small scale. So this is an, um, this is on my, my mixed media sketchbook. It's what I do all of my um, practice acrylics as well as um, all my watercolors on. If you have like specific watercolor paper, please use it, um, go for it. I do not, I use this uh, multimedia book um, and I find it really helpful because it comes in three different books and I have different books for different things um, and it's really easy to keep it all organized, at least for me. Um, so this specific one, I did three um, different ones. Um, and again, use this as inspiration. You can do whatever design you want. Um, if you are unfamiliar or uncomfortable doing your own design and you do want to use the traceable um, as maybe your first go, um, feel free to do that. It is not this scale. It is the, um, the whole scale. Um, it's the, the whole eight and a half by five and a half um, scale. And then in my, in my Patreon, that same post, and I, I did already, uh, did I? Yes, so I already, um, I already posted it in the chat. Um, so if you go to that link, there will also be three other sizes. So I have an 11 by 14, nine by 12, eight by 10, and then my sketchbook. Um, size which is eight and a half by five and a half and so that's the whole size of it like I think it goes from like here to here these these are the edges right um, so it goes like the whole page so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do it um, in a small scale first and then we're going to do it in a larger scale because it's a lot easier to show you on a smaller scale um, in terms of if you're doing like a compilation. Um, so let's say you are doing nursery art or you're doing um, like a gift and you wanna do like, um, uh, what's the word? It's where like you have three things that go together. It's like tertiary, or not tertiary, it's like a triptych. There we go, it's a, trip, a triptych. So it's a, it's a um, you have three different paintings that kind of all go together. So that's what this would be. Um, and you can do just one, um, or you could do three, or you could do six or four, or however you wanna do it. Um, and you, they're all a little bit different, um, but because of the color, you could all make them match each other. Um, so, and you can change your colors. Um, this is what we did last month. So if you like uh, hamsters, go go do that. <laughs> um, that's free on my, my YouTube. Um, but yeah, so we have that one and then we're doing that one next week. Um, so what we're gonna do, um, oh, let me go over the rest of the supplies. I'm getting distracted. Um, okay, so I have the notebook. I have the, um, the traceable, if you would like it, it is free for this class. Um, so no matter when you're viewing this class, whether or not live or a year from now, um, it'll be free in my Patreon. I will not, I will not cap it. I will not um, charge for it, okay? Um, and then I have, uh, these are Culture Hustle um, from Stuart Semple uh, watercolors. You can really use whatever whatever watercolors you want. Um, I'm I'm really big on using what you have. Don't buy extra things. Don't You don't have to buy exactly what I'm using. Um, all of the things that I'm using are in the description below if you want to know what I'm using um, or you, would, you like what I'm using and you want to buy it. 
um, but it's not like it's not necessary you use what you have I mean again I'm not even using watercolor paper I'm using mixed media paper because I feel like it makes me be able to be like be more free because I don't feel like I'm wasting paint or wasting um, you know wasting super expensive I, I just get to be more free I feel like and for me watercolor is definitely more of a I don't know a fun thing versus acrylics is a little bit more of my job I feel like I have to be good at that versus like watercolor I'm just I am like you I'm a beginner and I'm sharing my knowledge um, and it's it's just fun art for me um, so um, you have your watercolors you have your obviously your water your paper towel um, I have a little palette that came with my watercolors I have a bunch of different sizes of round brushes um, it's really up to you what you want to use. Um, I have this one that I'm going to be using for like the main washes. Um, and then I have some other sizes. Um, again, if you want to use exactly what I use, um, I do have an Amazon um, list that you can look up all the things that I use. You are going to need some tape. And you technically don't need it, but it is really, it's a lot easier having some tape. Okay. So I would suggest grabbing some tape. I'll use the darker one so you can see it better. And then, um, and then you're going to need some type of pen or acrylic marker or sharpie marker, um, like a fine tip sharpie marker or something, some other um, pen that you can add some detail with. Um, the other option is, is that you can use a very fine brush, but I find it a lot more. I don't know, just more whimsical um, using the marker. I'm using a fine tip acrylic marker, um, but I think if I had a Sharpie, I would probably use that, but I don't have a fine tip Sharpie. So I'm using what I have. I'm not buying extra supplies. I'm using what I have and having fun with it, okay? All right, so the first thing, um, actually, does anybody have any questions so far? Hopefully, hopefully we don't have any questions. I think I might do four, so I'm gonna do it this way. Because why not? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out um, you're gonna figure out where everything is with your tape. And I'm just going to I'm do the sides first. So I'm gonna do a couple small ones, and then after I'm done with those, then you can move on, then I'm gonna move on to making it a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to put this somewhere in the middle. Here, it's easier for me to see the middle if it's this way. So I'm going to do four because I can. And it's not perfect, but it'll get the job done. Okay. So once you have um, everything kind of mapped out, and if I were doing, um, when, when I do the bigger one, I will probably tear out all three things so I can do them all at the same time, because there's going to be stages of this. You have to do the background, let it dry, do the little, um, little textured blobs, let it dry, um, and then after it's completely dry, that's when you add all of the details. And what's cool about doing multiple at a time is that while you're working on the other ones, the first and second and third, and they all dry as you kind of move around. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our colors. Now all these colors are based off of uh, the last one that I did. Um, so we're just going to, I, I, usually, I usually clean them out before I do it, but I was running late. 
and if I'm honest I don't ever clean them out unless I have a class because I don't like to waste things I will use the color that's in here because it's not like acrylics like once it dries it's like well that's wasted paint and you have to throw it away watercolor isn't like that when you add water back to it it just reactivates the paint and then you get to use that pigment um, so I feel like nothing goes to waste unless I do a class and I have to get rid of that but, but that's just a personal preference in terms of feeling like I have a clean palette for class but you know here we are um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take now these these colors um, these are very um, like boho-esque like tans and like reddish tans and they're all in like the tan spectrum a very um, like chic colors I would say um, but you can use different colors like let's say you have um, an underwater like whale theme for your nursery or uh, maybe you're gifting this to someone or um, a bathroom that has like green tones or something like that change these colors to match your decor um, it's that simple um, you can do and honestly you can do any design it doesn't have to be leaves it could be um, some whimsical like like daisy flower um, it could be um, it could really be anything you could put anything there um, so yeah we're gonna go ahead uh, was this supposed to have started minutes ago? Um, we started at 2 o'clock. Um, and I went over supplies and then certain things that um, we went over. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with our color mixing. So the first color that you're going to want to do is your background color. Now this is like, I would say it's almost white. Um, so I have here... Now let me just kind of mix this up and see what I have. Honestly, that's a great color. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a, a brownish red tone. So you can grab a little bit of brown, maybe a touch of red or pink. Um, and then if it's too colored, uh, like this is a little bit, um, it's a little bit too red, I would say. So you can actually go in with some white and make it a little less saturated. Okay, and I'm gonna add a little bit more water that'll also make it less saturated. So it's a little bit more of like a light peachy color. Um, and while we're at it, I'm gonna go ahead and just mix together some of these colors. I have some browns here, some yellows. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay on kind of the um, reddish pinkish tan colors um, rather than the yellows um, and that's just a personal preference again change these colors to match um, whatever it is that you are doing again you can be green you can be brown purple that song just popped in my head it's like uh, it could be brown it could be blue it could be violet sky that one and now I can't get Will Ferrell out of my head <laughs> because, uh, anyways. Um, okay, so I have these two colors and then I'm gonna do one that's, well, yeah, I'm gonna do one that's a little bit of a, maybe a little bit more yellow. So I'm just gonna take this yellow that's already on my palette, just adding a little bit of yellow, a tiny bit of brown, Again, I don't want them, I don't really want them saturated. Like I, I really do want them to be very light and there's not much difference between all these colors. It just one's a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is now that I have my colors um, and I can, I can change these colors as we go. Um, but that's what's cool, really cool about having doing something like this is that you get to test all of your colors. You get to test the colors and see um, how they are. So you could theoretically, you could do one and see how the colors are. And then um, on the second one, you're like constantly adjusting colors and figuring out um, what you want. I'm gonna do the background all the same color. So I'm pretty confident in this color. 
So I'm just going to use a large brush and just go all the way across the painting um, within like all the lines. Now I think that they can be a little bit darker so I'm going to add a little bit of a darker tone and I'm going to do, I like that tone so I'm going to do the same thing over here and I'm using mostly just the color but I do have a good amount of water on my brush and it's making it very easy to add and mix this color and then before I you probably can't even see there's a difference but you can see that it's all wet um, if you want it to be darker you can add another coat of maybe something darker just make sure that it's very even I'm making mine just a little bit darker and I'm also trying to make sure that there's no puddles of water near the tape and that I'm taking all the excess water um, off okay um, so that's that it's a little hard to see on camera but trust me it is there I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my brush because that's all I'm using that brush for and if you don't have one of those large brushes um, you can use um, you can use any any brush really that you want all right so the next portion we have to wait until this all dries because if you add it now it's going to blend into the wet so um, if you have a hair dryer you can do that um, if you want to just wait um, I'm just gonna let it wait and I'm gonna talk about some other things while we let that wait um, and then I also need to replenish one of my colors because I ended up using the darker color um, mixed into the background um, so there's that um, while that dries I'm gonna go over um, last week's live class as well as what's coming up um, and what we just finished in our page in my patreon um, and that's available uh, to all of my cobalt patrons. Um, so last week, if you do enjoy dabbling in acrylic, um, we did a pastel seascape. And that was really fun. We did a pastel um, seascape with like a sunrise. Um, and I think it came out really, really nice. It would look lovely in a bathroom. And I, eventually I plan to put it in the bathroom but I have not put it in the bathroom yet. One, because I wanted to, you know, show you guys. Um, but um, I'm horrible at putting my artwork up on the wall. <laughs> um, and I actually like it. So um, there's that. Uh, that is available free on my YouTube channel. Um, all of my free classes, um, free live classes, stay up on my YouTube. I don't take them down. Um, so if you see a class um, anywhere on my Facebook or YouTube, it's free. Go paint it. Um, in Patreon, I do have some exclusive paid, uh, paid Patreon classes. Um, so for those of you who don't know what Patreon, it's a way to support me as an artist um, while also receiving like perks as being a part of like an exclusive community. Um, and for the $10 tier, I do monthly tutorials just for them. And we did this as a part of a four painting series of uh, like kind of abstract art um, and this looks less abstract only because um, we're, we're doing like a cool and warm colors um, so like blues and then like reds and yellows except that a giraffe is normally yellow so it looks a little more realistic than I anticipated um, but I still love it. So uh, we did an elephant and a lion and a giraffe and um, not next month, but the month after we're gonna be doing a rhino and that'll complete our like four animal set. And then one of my patrons actually wanted to do a bear in that style. So I'm really excited um, to do a bear, but yeah. And then lastly, 
Um, I already gave you a quick glance at um, next week's class for next month watercolor class. Um, that's going to be our asters flowers. Um, but in my Patreon, at the $20 level, um, we just finished this turtle. Look at all that detail. This took about eight hours, I would say. It took a little, little over eight, eight hours to paint. Um, but it is available in my patron. I do not take my classes down. They are available. Um, even if you were not a patron in the months that I painted it, if you join at the $20 level, I would recommend waiting until the first, so then you'll have access to next month's tutorial too. But not only will you have access to that, but you will have access to literally every painting I've ever painted in my Patreon at the cobalt level. So not only the magenta tears, which all of those animals and all the things that I've painted for my Friday tutorials, but also all seven classes that it took to paint this. And it was so fun. And I, it's one of the more detailed paintings that we've done. Um, it's the probably the most detailed painting that I've done in Patreon. I think that's the longest that we've taken um, on a painting in Patreon. But I'm really proud of it, and it was a lot of fun. So I can't wait to see my patrons. I know a couple of them are painting along with me, um, and I can't wait to see them. But regardless, I think this is now this is now um, dry. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and move on to the next section. So I'm going to. Um, let's see, grab a little bit more brown, almost like a burnt sienna and brown, and that is really saturated, so I'm just going to maybe add a little bit of white, kind of just tone it down a little bit. All right, so now I have three different colors. And I'm just going to grab a little bit. And these dots, blobs, whatever you want to call them, they can really be any shape, any size. You're just going to add some blobs, some decorative blobs, and they can be in the shape of circles or ovals or a peanut. And I'm using all three different um, um, colors. Try to do different ones and then see what combination you like. Do you like the big blobs the best? Do you like the small ones? Do you like a combination of both? Do you like the dark ones more? Do you like the light ones more? Have fun and don't think about it too much. You fit, if you feel like any of them are too dark, you can always take a brush and slightly take out some of that pigment by wiping off your brush. Just 
just a little bit. I think I like, I think I like this one and this one the best. I like the, the big, the big blobs surrounded by smaller blobs. This one doesn't have any like big, big blobs. But again, you can't know that unless you do a bunch of them and figure out what you like. All right, so once that, um, we're gonna let that fully dry. Um, while this is fully drying, we're actually going to take off um, our tape because that's actually done at this point. I just have to figure out at which point. What I did first. And I'm going to keep this tape because I'm going to use some of it on the next page if I end up doing a bigger one, which I have some really big paper. It's too big for um, teaching it, but I think I'm going to do um, like a large scale. It's like, I think it's 11 by 14, I think, um, and I'm gonna have some fun. All right, so this is how it looks right now. Um, once these fully dry, we will take a, um, a, thing, a thing on my bobber, um, a, for me it's an acrylic marker, and let me show you real fast um, how we're going to do this. So I realize I have way too many things on my desk. Um, okay, so how are we going to do this? is I'm just going to show you with a marker or with a uh, pen when you do your um, your stem that's the first thing you're going to do and if I was doing the one um, that I'm looking at right now you're going to do a little swervy line and then you're going to have another one coming out there now you can do two things you can do the little leaves first um, or you can do all the stems and figure out where everything is going before you even start um, the leaves. So I like doing the stems first. And once you're done with that, then you're gonna put all the leaves out. Now, when I originally did this, I did the leaf like this. I went out, had that stem in the middle, and then came around. And kept drawing my lines. But then, but then what ended up happening is there was like, line. It, became like overcrowded for some reason, um, having that middle line. So what I would suggest is putting on, putting on the, um, the leaf first and then just starting from one side don't let that middle thing, because there's four, for me, four lines fit best, but if there was that middle line I would have to put four plus that middle line and sometimes I feel like it would it gets crowded especially on a small scale like this if it's on a larger scale um, you would probably have a little bit more control over um, where all your little things are um, but for instance here and I do make the the leaf here at the bottom a little bit more rounded than the top so try to make the tops a little bit um, try to make the tops a little bit pointier. See that one only had three, but if I would have done a middle line, I would have had to squeeze in four and that's that was my problem um, when I did the initial one because I didn't realize there was just too many lines. It was just, it was too small of a scale. Um, 
to have that many lines. And having that middle line didn't give me any um, help <coughs> um, of choosing my own, my own path. See, that one only needed two. All right. So then you're just going to add them. Um, and I would say probably make them a little bit bigger. But feel free to practice on another piece of paper first so you can kind of get it down. If you're not using the traceable, obviously. If you're not using the traceable, I would get a pen, get a pencil, maybe practice a little bit. Um, right now while this is drying so you can kind of get the feel for it. And just have fun. So I can tell that I've been making these a little bit too small, so I want to make them a little bit bigger. So you can tell as I went up, I started adjusting and you start getting into a little bit more of a routine of how you create them. Um, I kind of I kind of go up, do a point, come down, fix that point, and then I kind of just keep going in a circle until I create a whole thing. So that's how I do it. Um, but obviously you can do however, however you need to, however you're comfortable with it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab an acrylic marker and I'm going to make um, the different ones. Now, let me show you what the other ones look like. So this is the main one that, we're, that I'm going based off of. We also have this one. So this is the difference. It's a little smaller, um, less leaves, I would say, um, on all the stems. And then there's this one that kind of goes straight up. Um, so there's really no right or wrong way to do them. It's really up to you. So if I were to do this like that, and I'm going to do the, all the stems first. So I have a couple different ones. Now I get to just have fun and create a bunch of leaves um, and not worry about anything. I want to create all the different little leaf stems. Something to note is right here, I put a leaf right here and it is very close to this um, stem. So I'm not putting a leaf on the other side of the stem because it would be too close to that one. So now I have all my little, my little leaves. All 
And remember that you don't have to rush it. Like, take your time, enjoy the process. Don't feel like you need to go fast. Like, I have to move all this tape because I keep putting my arm in it. <laughs> and then it keeps sticking to my arm. It's very distracting. Okay. I am trying to keep in mind that um, when I put down... Um, my acrylic marker, I want to make sure that I'm not putting my hand where I just created a uh, design. So I am being, um, I'm being, you know, conscious of that. I'm just gonna keep going. Alright, so I'm really enjoying making like almost like fat bottom leaves because it gives it more room in the whole thing. To add those lines. Without it feeling um, squished. But on this scale, I think the lowest amount of lines I've put in there is three, and most of them are four, at least on this scale. And I think this one is missing one right here.
I think this is turning out quite lovely. So then once you're done with um, your, what would be a triptych, but I have a, I don't know what a four, one that's a four, um, quadri, quadri, whatever. Anyways, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I could Google it later. Um, but once you have um, all three or four or two, how, however you want to do it, um, if this is on individual ones, then it'll just kind of go around the outline. Um, when I was doing this, it was actually really hard not to stay on the line. Um, so it was really hard um, because I am I want to stay on the line. And when you go fast, it's easier to stay on the line. So try to go a little slow. And what I ended up doing is um, putting two dots on the corners. And you can do this with a with a pencil, um, so that maybe you can erase it later if you don't actually um, get to them. Where my pencil go? Um, let's see. Okay. Well, my pencil my pencil with me, so I guess I'm doing it with a pen. Um, but I put one dot on the actual corner, and then one dot just above that, kind of in the same you know in the same. Um, the same like if you if the box was just a tad bit bigger and when I do this I'm going and then I'm going to the outer edge so at some point they cross so here's an example I'm gonna go from the inner inner one to the outer one inner one to the outer one inner one to the outer one and then outer one, well I guess that one kind of has to go and then the point is that they kind of cross over and they're kind of wiggly wobbly and it's just kind of fun I just think it's so fun. It's fun them being able to kind of like crisscross and And there you go. We you have your fun, whimsical um, little art project. And as you can see, the process of it is really, really simple. But it's so fun to look at. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's just super easy to do. Um, anyways, I think I might do a project um, like this with my kids. Um, they all do the background and then they get to put as many different blobs as they want. They can put a handprint, they can put a footprint, like whatever they want. And then I'm gonna draw some type of design on top of it and then give that to um, 
my husband. Hopefully he's not actually watching. Because um, it was technically supposed to be a, um, a Father's Day gift. But I had this idea in my head for this, such a long time. And then we just never made it. But eventually. It will happen eventually. Um, but I thought that would be a really fun project. Um, but yeah. Um, I'm going to do one more on a bigger scale. Just so you guys can see um, how, how it would happen on a bigger scale. Um, and it's the same process. It's the same process as always. Um, just on a bigger scale. Um, I will say that it's probably a lot easier on a bigger scale um, in regards to the detail. So this is that. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. It is a larger scale, so you do have to have a little bit more paint. But it's, again, it's the same, it's the same process, just a larger scale. So as usual, we let that dry. I'm gonna create some more colors here. I think I want a little bit more of my burnt sienna with a little bit of white, maybe a tad bit of yellow. Oops, that was a lot of yellow. I don't want that much yellow. Red, come back. bit brown tone it down Um, while that dries, I do want to, um, I do want to share uh, my Facebook community. So if you're not a part of my Facebook community, it's different from my Facebook page. It is a Facebook group that I created um, to be able to share. I'll have like have a place to share all of the uh, creations from my classes and things like that, whether Patreon. YouTube um, or my Patreon art challenges. Um, I just encourage you guys just to post your work from my classes because um, if you're anything like me um, and you miss doing in-person classes, um, the end of the class where we all get together and take our picture of and we all get to see ev all of, like everybody took the same class but to see everybody chose a little bit of a different path and to be able to see that is such a cool experience, especially as me as the teacher. Um, and when I do things online, I don't really get to do that. I don't get to sit back at the end of the class and see everybody's cool art that um, I helped teach and create. Um, and I should say help inspired create. Um, so if you are a part of my community, then you get to share your version of my class and you get to see everybody else's version of that same class and it's a really fun thing to get to do um, so if you are not a part of that community I just posted it um, down below please go over there and um, join the community after this class I will post a picture of my um, 
my versions of this live class and in that same photo album you can just click the the name of the photo album and you can click that and then press um, add photos and then you can just add them in there you can also um, just post it on the wall of the group but it won't automatically get it won't get added to that album and so if you go into the album um, it'll you'll just see mine you won't see everybody else's in the class um, which is fine but I really enjoy when you guys add it to the album because then other people get to see that too um, and it's it's like that joining of the end of the class where everybody gets to see their um, their fellow classmates um, painting so I do encourage you to go over there um, and do that okay this is dry for me uh, I think I think it's dry for the most part um, and I'm just going to let's see I'm going to and okay so I learned in the last ones that I really enjoy the big blobs I really like the ones that kind of look like peanuts a couple that are darker. I'm gonna do another big one. And so this is actually, this is what happens when it's not dry all the way. You can kind of see that definitive line kind of start to fade into the background. So you can see that it wasn't totally dry, but that's okay. Um, I'm looking forward to doing this with bold colors like red and gray. Yeah, I think that would look great. Oh, and you can also add like all the little black dots. I didn't do that on the, uh, I didn't do that on the other side. Um, but obviously you're welcome to do any any version of what you want to do. Add anything. Go ahead and take these off. You can take this off as soon as the background is dry. And I didn't go as dark on the background as I did the other ones and I think I actually like the darker background better. I like the darker background better versus the bolder colors on the lighter background, but we'll see. We'll see once we um we keep going. But that's the fun thing about like if I were to do this one and do like a bunch of different ones, um, you could try if I were to paint this like for a client or for um, a nursery or something like that, I would do this first, and I would do I would actually do different ones each time, not just in the design, but I would play with the opacity, I would play with the saturation, I would play with maybe doing different colors um, versus like the same colors, because um, these are pretty much all the same colors. Um, there's a light background and then there's darker ones over it versus like if I were to do blue, you could do light blue and then on top you could do like blue, dark blue, teal, you could add in different things to see if you liked that or if it was just all the same color. Um, you could play around with it and figure out on a small scale what you like. Because um, I did, I like that and then when I, when I did this one I didn't make it as dark and I don't know why I did that. Um, but I can tell you right now I don't like it as much as the other ones. But we're going to keep going, um, and I want to see, I don't know, I'm curious to see what it looks like. Um, it is, my, my paper is buckling though, um, so keep that in mind that I'm going to have to um, make sure that it's closed shut. 
Um, whenever I have something that's buckling, I just, um, when it's when it's all the way dry, I will just close it and put a book on it, and then it'll it'll flatten out. Um, let's see. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do this first. I think the most interesting part of this is I'm, I'm, I'm able to do so many more lines in it, which I think is really fun. So I wasn't really able to do that many.
there we go. And I do think on this scale it feels... I mean, I think it would be fine if I had like a few of them. But I think I'm going to add dots on this one. Just so you can see the difference. Alright, there we go. So we have a couple different versions of it. One on a little bit of a bigger scale with some dots, some fun stuff, and then we have our smaller scale ones. I think I like how full these look, so I think if I did it on a bigger scale again, I would make these leaves bigger. I think that's what I would do. Because on the scale, these ones are just bigger and look more full versus these ones. I think if they were bigger, it would look better. But that's Paul, that's all part of trying it out and um, seeing how it goes, doing small ones, doing another scale, um, and just playing around with it. Um, so yeah. That is pretty much the end of class. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope that you will uh, join me next week. We are doing our purple asters, um, our purple flowers, just loose watercolor florals. It's really easy. It's a, real, a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, tell your friends, copy the link. Even if you don't send it to someone, it helps in the algorithm. Um, like this video, um, share it with your friends. Uh, I also have on my Facebook, I have, um, I will have, I haven't, I haven't actually made them yet. I will be making them tomorrow um, and posting them. But um, on YouTube, you can see all of the, um, the classes for next month. Um, but tomorrow I will be posting, either tomorrow or Friday, I'll be posting um, uh, our lineup for next month. So um, I'm really excited for it. Sneak peek in the cobalt class. So that's the $20 tier. We're painting a dragon and I'm so excited. Um, yeah. So if you have a little boy in your life who likes dragons, get ready because we're going to paint one. Um, anyways, I hope you all have a lovely night. Um, we will see you next week, next month. Um, and if you're not a part of my Facebook community or my Facebook, go over there and, and follow me and join that group because um, it's a lot of fun. And you'll get reminders because we all know it never hurts to have a couple of reminders in your life of wanting to do the things that you enjoy and not just the things everyone else needs. Okay, so I pray that you will come and uh, join me over there and um, let's have fun together. All right, so we'll see you next week and have a great rest of your night. Bye guys.